So definitely want to, again, uh, thank you uh, for being here today. We want to thank you for joining us here at LiveWire Ch Church. Welcome. Uh, we're kicking off a brand new series called The Body. Uh, I don't know if you've ever thought about your, your body or the human body and just how intricate and just how unique and just how fascinating it is. When you think about the body, there's so much intricacies in the body. It's, it's funny because we don't really think about our bodies all that often from the standpoint of what's going on inside. Like we, we think about, in, in a lot of ways, we think about the outside, we think about the exterior, we want to make sure we look good, we want to make sure, you know, the girls will, guys, if we're single, you know, the girls notice us or ladies, if you're single, that the guys notice you. And so we kind of beautify, and we put, put on some perfume, and, and, and we get a haircut. We take a shower, hopefully, at least once a week you take a shower. But uh, we take a shower, we look good. And, and, and so we, we know about kind of this exterior because we see it all the time, right? I mean, some of us wake up in the morning, we get up in the morning, we just look terrible, and we just got to do a lot to make ourselves look good. But we see this exterior, and we don't really think about the interior all that much. Have you ever thought about that? We don't really think about what's going on inside, but yet everything that's going on inside, I mean, there is just an intricacy to this body that it just boggles my mind. I don't know if it boggles your mind, but it boggles my mind like, man, you know, I, I never really think about, hey, is, is blood traveling through all, the, all my blood vessels? Uh, is everything, you know, are signals firing and, and things working? Is my heart pumping like it's supposed to be pumping? How's my liver? You know, are things going well? I mean, because we don't see it. But the fact of the matter is we have this incredible body that God's gifted us with. And just, and just in terms of the human body and then your individual body, my individual body, that is just incredible. In fact, I don't know if you, if you ever kind of looked at some facts about the body, about the human body, but did you know that your body has enough iron in it to make a metal nail three inches long? Did you know that? That there's enough iron in your, in your body to make a nail. How about this? If the eye was a digital camera, it would have 576 megapixels. So it's like we have digital cameras, we use them like crazy all the time. And so if your eye was a, a digital camera, it would be right around 576 megapixels. Uh, maybe, did you know about this, that your heartbeat changes and mimics the music you listen to? You know, so all those of you that just, you know, you love hip hop, man, your heart just boom, 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 you know. It's just going with it. And, and those of you that just like rock and roll, I mean, it's just, it's popping, it's going. And so your heart mimics the music that you, that you listen to, your heartbeat. Uh, did you know, and this is, you know, I don't know about this one, but this, a stinky body odor is caused when the skin bacteria feed on sweat. Doesn't that sound appetizing? Doesn't that sound just good? So those of you that really stink at times, okay, it's because your skin bacteria is feeding on, on your sweat, all right? That, that's what it feeds on, all right? That's kind of nasty. Um, but when you take one step, how about this one? When you take one step, you are using over 200 muscles. Did you know that? I mean, how incredible is that? that I, I mean, here I am on stage, and I'm, I'm taking a step, and every step I'm taking, over 200 muscles are, are going into motion and, and helping me to do what I want to do, helping me to move forward. When awake, the, uh, the brain produces enough electricity to power a small light bulb. Isn't that fascinating? I mean, you know, just pop in a light bulb into, into your lamp and, and you turn the switch and, and the light goes on and, and our brain, when it's awake, while we're awake, our brain has enough electricity, has enough power to, uh, to power a small light bulb. I mean, the human body is absolutely fascinating. The human body is everything that makes up you, right? I mean, the human body is everything that makes up who you are. The basic parts of the human body, I mean, we probably remember this from school. Those of you that are teenagers, maybe you've already learned this. If, uh, if you're in middle school or, or even in high school as you dive into a little bit deeper, but the basic parts of the human body, you've got the head, you've got the neck, you've got the torso, arms, and legs, right? And our bodies consist of a number of biological systems, maybe you didn't know this, that carry out specific functions necessary for everyday living, like the circulatory, digestive, and also the immune system. So we have all these systems that are going on. I mean, just kind of think about all of that. We've got all these systems that are going on. We've got these major parts uh, of, of, our, of our body, again, the head, torso, arms, legs. Also, along those lines, humans have uh, five vital organs that are essential for survival. These are the brain, the heart, the kidneys, the lungs, the liver. And we have all these, these essential organs that we need, that if we didn't have each of these organs, I mean, we would, we would eventually die. 
And so we have these different parts. And so, again, there are systems that are working in our bodies. And, and we've got these essential organs. And in fact, just kind of, again, looking at more of, of just how intricate and how fascinating the human body is. And, and even, even more so, just how fascinating the creator and how incredible he is to create this incredible body that you and I, again, that we have, that we walk in, that God did this. There are 640 muscles 206 bones, 22 organs, and 37.2 trillion cells in the human body. I mean, all of these parts, all of these pieces, all of these things that are working together to make up, not only make up our body, but also cause our body to work and to function the way that, it's, that it was designed by the designer, for it to function the way that he designed it to function. And again, we probably, like, we think of this stuff, and some of this stuff we learned when we were in school, but it's like, we don't think about this stuff on a regular basis, but it's fascinating. It's, it's, it's intriguing, and it's incredible. Again, the human body and, and, and what God has created there. All the time, your body's doing a million things that you're not even aware of. Like I said, we don't, we don't really think about it, like digesting breakfast. All right, anybody have breakfast this morning? All right, your body's working. It's working at digesting breakfast. It's growing new skin, and it's carrying oxygen to the cells. Now, that's absolutely fascinating. I don't know if you're as fascinated as I am. I don't know if you think that's incredible. I think that's incredible. I think that's, that's fascinating. But the reality is you didn't come to church for an anatomy lesson, right? I mean, that's not why you came to church uh, this morning. But the incredible thing about this is that just like the human body, the church is referred to as a body. In fact, the church is referred to as the body of Christ. That this is how God describes the church, and this is how God inspired the writers, especially in the New Testament. He says that he, he inspires the, the writers to write about, and, and Paul being one of them, the Apostle Paul uh, being one of them that wrote most of the New Testament, that he inspired Paul to write this idea, to talk about this idea of the body of Christ, of the church being the body of Christ. And that it's referred to, that the church is referred to as the body of Christ. Now, I'm not trying to be rude here. I'm not trying to be mean, okay? But I need to say this, okay? The Catholic church is not the church, okay? Or the Catholic church is not just the church. The church is the body of Christ, which is made up of every believer around the world. Every Christian, every person that has surrendered their life to Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of their life, every person that has dedicated their lives to Christ, every person that called on the name of Jesus to be saved, it makes up, it's not only a Christian, but makes up the church and makes up what is called the body of Christ. Now, just like the human body has all these parts that we just looked at, all these muscles, got all these joints, all these ligaments, all these organs, got everything just going on, all these cells, all of this is happening in, in our body, in, in this body. Now, you and I, I mean, we know, we realize, okay, we just have one body, but there's many parts to this body. And the same is true with the body of Christ. The body of Christ is made up of many parts. It's made up of many members. It's made up of many people. See, many Christians form the body of Christ. Form the body of Christ. And just like every part in the body, just like every member in the human body has a specific function, every single Christian has a specific function. And that's you. If you've ever, if you've called on the name of Jesus Christ to be saved, if you've given your life to God, if you have made Jesus the Savior and Lord of your life, you have been placed into the body. You've been placed into the church. You've been placed into, into the body, the body of Christ. And you have a specific purpose. See, see, we're not just here on this earth, not only as human beings, but especially as Christians, that we're not just here just taking up space and we're not here just to, just to suck in oxygen and blow oxygen out. I mean, and I know, I know there's a lot of people that struggle with this as far as purpose. And there's a lot of people that are walking the face of this earth. And there was, there's a lot of people going to school. And there's a lot of people going from one job to another or one career to another. And they're trying to figure out, like, what's my purpose? What am I called? Uh, what am I here for? Why, why, am, on, why am I on earth? 
And then there's so many people that are so discouraged because they can't figure it out. They can't come to the conclusion of why they're here. And, and so many people just walk this life aimlessly. So many people get to that place where they don't even really care anymore because it's just like, man, you know what? I can't figure it out and, I, and I'm over it. And then we know that there are a lot of people, sadly, that take their own lives because they don't know why they're here. They don't know what their purpose is. Now, we talked about Adam and Eve uh, in, in, uh, in our last series, and, and we were looking at that story and how God created a, a perfect world, and, and Adam and Eve were perfect, and that God gave them, gave them purpose. And then that purpose kind of got messed up, and, and life got kind of messed up, and, and, and what was perfect now became imperfect because of their choice, because they made a choice. And, and God never intended for us to struggle with purpose. God never intended for us to struggle with what is life all about, what's the meaning of life. But what happened is because because Adam and Eve made a choice and sin entered into the world and what was perfect became imperfect, now all of that kind of got messed up, if you will. That stuff kind of got, you know, it, it just got destroyed, not necessarily completely destroyed, but it just kind of got messed up because what was perfect is no longer perfect. And so now we struggle with what, what is, you know, what is the right way to go? What's the direction that I should take my life? What should I believe in? What's the truth? Because you know as well as I do, there's a lot of voices out there that are saying, hey, this is the way. Hey, this is the truth. Hey, this is what you should do. Hey, this is what your purpose should be. But the reality is this, friends, is we have to go back to and even though at this point in time, until Jesus Christ comes back and we fully step into eternity where everything is perfect again, that even though we, it can't be exactly like the Garden of Eden when everything was perfect because we live in an imperfect world, that we could still experience the kingdom of God on this earth. That we can still know what our purpose is, what the meaning of life is, by simply going to the one that created it, the one that started it all the one that started it from the beginning, and even though we messed it up, that God is the one that so loved the world that he sent his one and only son to get us out of the mess that we're in. See, the fact of the matter is, you and I, we have purpose. We've got meaning. And God knows the meaning of your life, and he knows the meaning of my life. He knows the purpose of your life. He knows the purpose of my life. He knows what we're, what we're called to do. He knows what we're gifted to do. And even along those lines of being gifted that God is the one that placed within you and I certain gifts. Now, in this series, what we're going to look at, we're going to look at what is the body of Christ? Like, what, what, what does that all mean? And then we're going to look at, uh, and, uh, throughout this series, we're going to look at what does the body of Christ do and, and what's the purpose of the body of Christ? And even as we talk about as Christians that we're, we're members of the body of Christ, that we make up the body of Christ, and that we have a specific function just like the, the other member or the members of our human body, that we have a specific function. We're going to discover that. We're going to talk about that because I want you to be able to figure out what is your purpose? What is the calling that's on your life? Because the calling that's on your life, I mean, I know, friends, listen, I know that it's easy to look at me up here and say, oh, well, you know, yeah, he definitely has a call on his life. He definitely has a gift. He's, he's good at what he does. Maybe you don't think that, but that's okay. That's, I'll, I'll choose to think that you think that about me. But but the fact of the matter is it's easy to see that because I'm standing on a stage and, and I'm speaking. I'm not looking at notes and people tell me all the time, how do you do that? And, and I just, I spend time, you know, looking at my message and I learn it and I, and I go through it and I allow God to then step on stage with me and, and speak through me. But the fact of the matter is, is you could look at what's going on, even with our musicians, our singers, you could look at what's going on saying, yeah, you know, those people, they definitely have a call in their life. But friends, the fact of the matter is you have a call in your life. And not only is it a call, but it's incredible what God has in store for your life. It's absolutely fascinating. It's absolutely just, it, just absolutely incredible what God has in store for your life. That it's not just for the elite. There is no elite. There are no people that are, that are up, uh, higher on the, on the rank, closer to God than everybody else. I'm not closer to God than you are. I've got to have a personal relationship with him and, and I wrestle with my faith and I struggle sometimes and I make mistakes and, and I'm, I'm trying to figure this stuff out as well and I'm no closer to God, to God than you are simply because I'm a pastor. No, that's the call on my life. But there's also a call on your life that God has an incredible gift in store for you, that God has an incredible plan 
for your life, that he's given you meaning. And that's important. And the reason why that's important is because your life can, and if you choose God's plan for your life, and if I choose God's plan for my life, your life can and your life will make a difference in the lives of those around you. See, we can get so caught up with our own lives and like, okay, what can I do and where can I go and what am I about and what's my, what's my purpose? But the fact of the matter is, see, God wasn't just thinking about you. And this is why, friends, especially those of us that have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of our life, this is why God didn't say, okay, go be my lone ranger over here. This is why God said, now that you're saved, I'm placing you in a body. And I'm placing you in this body that is made up of many other members. And I want you to work together as a body, just like our human body works together so that we could live, so that we could thrive. God says, I want you to work together as a body so that you can accomplish my purposes and my will on this earth. It's interesting. And, and we'll look at some, uh, some scripture in just a moment. But it's interesting because God could use anything. God could use anyone. God can create whatever he wants to express his plan and to express his will and to express his personality and character in this earth, to bring his will into this earth. He could use anything he wants. He could use any type of creation he wants. But you know what? What's, what's awesome about this whole idea of the body of Christ is that God wants to use fallible people like you and I. God can use whatever. But you know what God says? God says, I want to use this idea of a body. I want to use this idea of, I'm going to call it the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is going to be my expression in the world. We'll look at that in, in just a second. Look at that more in just a second. That the body of Christ is going to be my expression in the world. God could use whatever he wants. He could have used the angels if he wanted to. He could, create, he could have created anything else, something else to bring his plan and his will and his purposes, to bring his character, to let everybody know who he is. He could, have done, he could have used anybody. He could have used himself. But God decided to use fallible people like you and I. And I think that's incredible. And that God didn't just say, hey, go be my man or my woman over here. But that God said, hey, I'm going to place you in a body. So look at, think of it this way. Like the human body, the body of Christ is everything that should make up Christ. And the reason why I put should in quotations there is because we know, I mean, even in our own individual lives, we know that we're far from perfect, but Jesus was perfect. I mean, we know we are far from doing everything right, but Jesus did everything right. We know that we're far from, uh, from making foolish choices from time to time. Jesus made all the right choices, right? But the, but the reality is this, again, this is, this is the incredibleness of God that still God wants to use you and I. For those of you that didn't grow up in, in, in church world and, and maybe you're not even sure about if God's real and, and uh, if Jesus is, is the savior of the world, if, if the Bible's true, let me just say this. Christians aren't Christian because we're perfect. It has nothing to do with us being perfect. Now, God is perfecting our lives, but the fact of the matter is the reason why we're Christian is because we, we proclaim, we confessed, and we prayed a simple prayer, and we asked Jesus to come into our life, and we asked him to bring his will and his plan in our lives. We're not perfect as Christians, and those of you that you're not sure about this whole, whole thing, listen, if a Christian ever comes up to you or ever has come up to you and said, oh yeah, you know what, my life is perfect, they are lying to your face because there is nobody that is perfect and that's not the reason why we're Christian we're Christian because we made a choice and we're Christian because we rely on every single day we're relying on the perfect Savior Jesus Christ not our own perfection we're not relying upon our own goodness we're relying upon Jesus's goodness we're not relying upon our own faithfulness we're relying upon his faithfulness and so the, the, the incredibleness of that along the lines of the body of Christ, because you would think, man, wouldn't God want to use something that's perfect? Wouldn't God, if, if it's going to be an expression of him, wouldn't God want to use something that is just perfect like he is? And that's his perfect character and his perfect nature. You know, that's going to do exactly what he does. Wouldn't God want to do that? But the incredible thing is that God said, no, I want to use people 
I want to use human beings. And I think a big part of that is because the people that are lost, the people that are helpless, hopeless, that are looking, searching for answers, searching for the truth, they are going to relate to you and I a whole lot better and easier than they would relate to God, right? Because God's perfect, and they look at God, and they're just like, oh, you know, I know that I can't, I know that I can't ever, ever attain that, but they look at your life, and they look at my life, especially those, that are, those of us that are Christian, they look at our lives, and they see that there's some imperfection. They see that there's some uh, there's some frailties. They see that we fail from time to time, that we make mistakes. And if we're, if we're true to ourselves and we're true to the call of God on our lives, then we're going to proclaim that. We're going to say, hey, you know what? I'm not perfect. I make mistakes, but I serve a perfect Savior. I've given my life to a perfect Savior. And people can relate to that. And I think that's a big reason why God said, I'm going to use this idea of the body of Christ. Uh, Paul, like I said, in the New Testament, he writes, uh, talks about this idea over and over. Notice this in Ephesians. This is just one of the places that Paul talks about this. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22. He says, God has put everything under the control of Christ. Now notice that, because we talked about God's sovereignty last week, that God is in control. Well, God has relinquished control to Jesus, to Christ, the risen Savior. God has put everything under the control of Christ. Notice this. He has made Christ the head of everything for the good of the church. So notice that, that Christ, Jesus, is the head of the church. All right? Notice that. Because just like our head guides our lives, like we make choices with our head, we make the decision in our head, we make the choice of what we're going to do, where we're going to go, what we're going to eat, what we're going to say, all of those choices, all of that direction comes from our head. And we make that choice with our head. And then what does the body do? The body follows. I mean, can, I mean, wouldn't it be just absolutely crazy if the body or the members of our human body didn't want to work together? And so like the head saying, all right, we're going to go this way. And the body's going, nope, I don't want to. You know? And it's like walking in an opposite direction. No, I don't feel like going no north. I want to go south. You know, and it just starts, the feet start moving in a different direction. Arms are like flailing and, and your legs are moving different. And what if the members of our body said, no, you know what? I don't feel like doing what the head wants. But that's who Jesus is. Jesus is the head of the church, the body of Christ. He's the one that is leading the way. And again, that God has given uh, him the complete control of the body of Christ. The church is, here it is. The church is Christ's body and completes him as he fills everything in every way. Now, notice this. He has made Christ the head of everything for the good of the church. Now, you and I, we, we do a pretty good job of taking care of our bodies. You know, some better than others, and, and we could probably, every single one of us could probably do a better job. But Jesus does a perfect job. He does a perfect job of taking care of the body. Notice again, he has made Christ the head of everything for the good of the church. Jesus is perfect at that. Where you and I, we're, you know, we might be pretty good, we might be great, we're not perfect at taking care, care of our body, but Jesus is perfect at taking care of the body of Christ. He's perfect at taking care of your individual life, perfect at taking care of my individual life, and that's exactly what he wants to do. He wants to see you and I succeed. He wants to see us thrive, and he wants to see us grow and develop, and again, fulfill our purpose, fulfill the purpose that he has for us. But the fact of the matter is, where we look at our own lives, and, and even with our bodies where maybe we might fail, where maybe we're not, we're not completely perfect, that's not Jesus. See, Jesus is absolutely well, well aware and well equipped to take care of the body of Christ. Again, the church is Christ's body and completes him. So you, you remember, or, and, and maybe you've said this about your spouse before, that you know, your husband, you say about your husband, oh, my husband, he completes me. Or about your wife, oh, my wife, she completes me. Or this person, this friend of mine, they complete me. And we, we know that idea. We've probably say it, said it uh, several times in our lives. And, and just like maybe somebody uh, completes us, that we would think of, man, that person completes me, we complete Christ. So without, without us, 
Jesus would have no body. Now, I'm not talking about Jesus not having a body. When Jesus came back to life, he was given a glorified body, and, and the, the Bible points out very clearly that he sits at the right hand of God the Father, uh, sits at the, uh, right, uh, on the throne there at, at, at the right hand of God the Father. So I'm not saying that Jesus doesn't have a body. I'm just talking about this idea of the body of Christ. Without, without us, Jesus doesn't have a body. But without Jesus... We don't have guidance, and we don't have life. Think about that for a moment. Because if our our human head, if my head was severed from my body, I'm not going too far, and I'm not going to stay alive too much longer, right? And the same is true with the body of Christ. See, Jesus is the head of the body of Christ, and yeah, we can, we can sit there and like, well, you know, hey, without, without us, Jesus has no body. He has no expression in the world. Without us, Jesus has no body. But in the same token, Jesus is going to say, well, without me, you don't have any guidance for your life. And this, this, again, relates to why there are so many people that are walking aimlessly and that are just wondering, what's my purpose? What's the meaning of life? What am I supposed to do? What's my calling? And the fact of the matter is Jesus wants to perfectly reveal that in our lives and and to our lives and through our lives. And he wants to do that. But we got to come in line with the head. We got to come in line with the body and come in line with the head that is going to guide our lives and also bring life to our very lives is the head. The head gives the direction. So notice again that it says that Jesus is the head of the body and that we're a Christ body. Or I would like to kind of say it this way. The body of Christ is his embodiment in the world. We're the, we're the, the, the personification of God in this world. We're the, as I said earlier, the expression. Christians that make up the body of Christ, we are the expression of Christ. We're the expression of God in the world. It's kind of like, uh, anybody remember the movie Avatar? All right, you remember the movie Avatar, and there was a, uh, basically a human that was kind of uh, went under, so to speak, but takes control of a, of a creature, takes control of, of an avatar, and, and it's not that that human became that creature, but it's that that human is controlling that creature, or that human becomes the head of that creature. And, and that, that creature is the personification or the expression of that human being that was controlling it. And it's very similar, that, that movie or, or that idea of, of controlling an avatar is very similar to Christ being the head of the body of Christ, being, the, being the, the, the head of the church, that we are his expression in this world. You've probably heard it this way, that you and I, if we're Christian, we're the hands and feet of Christ in the world. See, people aren't going to know about Jesus. They're not going to know about the life that God has for, uh, for, for them. They're not going to know about the, the incredible plan that God has for their life. They're not going to know about the goodness that God desires. They're not going to know about their creator if we don't express him in the world, which, again, is incredible because God could use anything, but God says, no, I'm going to use every single Christian, and I'm going to place them in this body. I'm going to place them in what I want to call the body of Christ, God says. We're his expression in the world. People aren't going to know about God without us. People aren't going to know about his plan without us. People aren't going to, want, people aren't going to know the truth without us. They're not going to know the way without us. And so, friends, here's the thing, is that, you know, if we're Christian, and if we're just kind of walking aimlessly with everybody else, People are missing out on what God wants to do in our lives, and then even more importantly, what God wants to do through our lives to impact their lives. And I wonder how many Christians are just kind of walking aimlessly with the rest of the world. I wonder how many Christians don't have purpose, don't have meaning, aren't surrendered to God, aren't completely surrendered to God, aren't co- completely surrendered to the, to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And I wonder how many lives are being missed. Because friends... If we're Christian, if we're a Christ follower, we should be impacting people's lives around us, and we have a great responsibility to do that. That it's not just, hey, we're the body of Christ. Isn't that just so cool, man? We're the, like, man, we're like all these members, and we're like in this body, and it's like so cool. It's just like, like the human body. Man, that's just incredible, man. I mean, we're not going to do anything with it, but it's just incredible. 
It's like, no, man, we got purpose. And you know as well as I do, there's a world out there that's dying. There's a world out there that's hurting. There's a world out there that's looking for answers. And God's saying, I saved you. I saved you to save others like you. I saved you so that through you, I could save others just like you. So here's the thing that I think of, and we'll spend the last couple minutes on this. Here's the thing, the other thing that I think of is, how do we express, if we are the body of Christ, if every Christian in the world makes up this idea of the body of Christ, and it's similar to the human body, you've got all these parts, all these organs, all these, all these, uh, all these members that make up all these muscles, all these cells, all these things that make up the, the human body and that have a specific function, that, that just like the human body, the body of Christ is made up of all these Christians that have a specific function. And if we're the embodiment, if we're the expression of Jesus Christ, if we're the personification, if we're his avatar in this world, how do we express him? How do we go about doing that? Because again, we could just kind of like, okay, I'm in the body of Christ. Whoa, what do I do? And so to me, before we go any further, if we're his, if we're his hands and feet, if we're his, his torso and we're his legs and, and we're his heart and liver and, and mouth and ears, if we're all of those things or, or we're one of those things, if we, if we make up this body of Christ, how do we express Christ in this world? Number one, the first one that I want to look at is we've got to become his ambassadors. I mean, we gotta, we got to truly take on this idea of being his expression or, or even uh, look at it this way, being his representative. Notice what Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 5.20. He says, therefore, we are Christ's representatives. Those of us, again, that are Christ followers, that have accepted, accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of our life, we are Christ's representatives. Another translation says that we are ambassadors, that we're Christ's ambassadors or ambassadors of Christ. Think of it this way. Whenever we send an ambassador from our country to another country, what is that ambassador going to do? That ambassador represents the United States of America. And just like we, we choose representatives, we choose senators, and we choose representatives to represent us, we choose them from our state, and we choose them, like for us, it's the state of Florida, we choose representatives for the state of Florida to represent us in, on Capitol Hill, in Washington, right? I mean, they're representing our state, and they're representing the United States of America. Now, sadly, a lot of them don't do it all that well. And don't really take our ideas and, and represent us too well. But the fact of the matter is that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to represent that particular state. They're supposed to represent the United States of America. And friends, that's a responsibility that we have. That as Christians in the body of Christ, that we are representatives. Who are we representing? Now, I know we, we say the answer, and again, those of us that are Christian, we say the answer that, yeah, I'm representing Jesus. Can I just, let's just, can we just be real? Can we just be honest with each other? You just be honest with yourself, just like I, I've got to be honest with myself. Am I really representing Jesus Christ well? Now, I didn't say perfect. I didn't say, are you, being, are you perfect? I didn't say, are, are, you, are you not making mistakes? I didn't say, are you not falling short of the glory of God from time to time? I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about perfection. But are we representing him well? Because again, Paul says here, and notice the, notice the impact. Therefore, we are Christ's representatives, Christ's ambassadors, and through us, God is calling you. And he's talking about he's calling the world, that through the body of Christ, those of us that are Christian, that are ambassadors, he's calling the world. We beg you on behalf of Christ to become reunited with God. God wants the world to be reunited back with him. But the only way that happens is if we Christians, if we, the church, the body of Christ, if we represent him well, so how do we express, how do we express uh, Christ in our world as the body of Christ? Again, number one, we become his, amb his ambassadors. We become his representatives. Number two, we get the word out. And, and let me just back up for just a second because this is what Jesus did when he walked the earth. He was the exact representation. The writer of Hebrews uh, talks about this. He was the exact representation or is the exact representation of God that Jesus perfectly characterized and personified and expressed God. 
And now Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father, and you and I, now that's our responsibility. Because Jesus came, he fulfilled his job, he went back to heaven, and now he's over the church, he's guiding the church, he's leading the church, he's given the church life, the body of Christ life, and now the responsibility is upon us to be representatives. But notice that just as Jesus represented God in this earth, that now you and I have that mantle, that you and I have that baton, and we're running that race. And just like Jesus got the word out, You remember when Jesus was walking, you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, and and you hear Jesus constantly saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is near. The kingdom of heaven is right here. And what he was saying is that I have brought the kingdom of heaven to this earth. I am bringing God's expression. I'm bringing his plan and his will and his goodness into this earth. And so that's why when you see Jesus doing all of these good things, it wasn't just because Jesus wanted to do good. It was the fact that that's who God is. That God does good and wants to do good in people's lives. That God wants to uh, meet people's needs. That God wants to restore people. And we'll come back to that in just a second. That God wants to bring good in every person's life. And so another way that we express uh, Christ in the world as the body of Christ is we get the word out. Notice again Paul writes in Romans 10, 15. He says, as scripture says, how beautiful are the feet of the messengers who announce good news. Now, ultimately, what is the good news that, we're, that we need to get out there? The fact that God so loved the world, that he sent his one and only son, that we don't have to die in our sin, and that we don't have to be separated from our sin, that we don't have to, that we don't have to spend eternity away from God, that we don't have to walk this life aimlessly and purposeless, but that God has made a way where there, where there was no way through Jesus Christ. And friends, there's a lot of people that don't know that good news. And some of us, man, we need to get on that 6 o'clock news and we need to broadcast it. We need to come around, around new, we need to, we need to have like an a emergency broadcast and we need, to, we need to let people know. And the fact of the matter is, there are people that you know that I don't know. There are people that you have influence with that I don't. And that's why God placed you in the job that you're at or around the people that you're around, or the people that you see constantly when you go shopping, whether it's grocery shopping or or shopping for other things. When you go to the stores, retail, you go to the mall. There's people that maybe you see over and over, cashiers or employees or, or just people that you run into and you run into them over and over. You have influence and God's brought you around certain people. Why? Because he wants you to get the word out in their lives. Now, let me, let me caution us here. Because I'm not talking about preaching at people. I'm not talking about telling people how bad their life is and how they need to straighten up. I'm talking about just expressing the simple love of God. This is why for LiveWire Church, this is why our vision, our mission is so simple, to love God and love people. Why? Because we believe that that's the entrance, that if we'll just, if we'll just love on people, they will want God. They will want to know about the God that we love. They will want to know about this Jesus that, is, that has saved us. They'll, they'll want to know about all of that simply because we're expressing his love to them and in their lives. So I'm not talking about preaching at people. I'm talking about expressing his love. And, and friends, Christians, body of Christ, this is what we do. We've got to get the word out. Nobody else is going to get the word out for God. God's looking to us to do that. He's relying upon us to do, to do that. So how do we express Christ in the world? Again, number one, we become his representatives. We become his ambassadors. Number two, we get the word out. Number three, again, I'm talking about, we were talking about restoration just a moment ago. We bring aid to the hurting, the helpless, and the hopeless. Notice again, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 5.18, God has done all this He has restored our relationship with him through Christ and has given us this ministry of restoring relationships. And so our relationship was restored, that that relationship that was severed all the way back where Adam and Eve made a poor choice, that relationship that that was severed, God restored that relationship through Jesus Christ. So now we can have that intimate relationship with God once again. We can be truly connected with God once again. But here's the flip side of that, or here's, here's another thing along those lines. It's not only as Christians is our relationship restored with God. God wants to restore his relationship with every person on the face of this earth. And he's given us the opportunity to do that. 
to go and help get people connected back to him, to go and help and, and bring that aid that people need. Because again, as we said just a few moments ago, people are walking aimlessly. People are helpless. People are hopeless. People are hurting. And God has given you and I the ability to get out there in our world, wherever it is that we, wherever it is that we're at, that God's given us the ability to bring that restoration. That God's given us the ability to restore the hurting, restore those that are, that are helpless, restore those that are hopeless. That God's given us that ability and, friends, again, that responsibility that it's upon us. And that as we, as we bring that restoration, as we bring that help, as we bring that assistance. See, there's some of us that have been blessed in incredible ways. And, and even more so, I'll be more specific, we've been blessed financially. And we could really... We could really help some people. There's some of us that we have, we just have resources and we could really help some people. There's some of us that, man, we've just, we've got like all this knowledge of stuff and we could truly help people. We could give people direction. And God's given us that ability to do so. Because as we bring that restoration, as we bring that help, that assistance in people's lives, then we're, we're able to introduce them. We're able to bring them to the one who actually saved them, the one who wants to completely restore them, and that's Jesus Christ. That's God. See, friends, just like the human body has many parts, we, the body of Christ, are made up of many members, made up of, 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 of many people, made up of every Christian on the face of this earth. And we're going to continue along this uh, along this vein and talking about the body of Christ and what does that all mean? Because if we relinquish as Christians and as the body of Christ, if we relinquish the call of God on our life, if we, if we just kind of set it aside and ah, it's no big deal or we be, if, if we just become lazy at it, then there's a lost and dying world out there that's not going to hear what you and I have had the opportunity to hear. You remember the person that came to you and say, hey, God loves you. Hey, I just want you to know, man, God has a plan for your life. Do you remember the person that just expressed God through their, through their actions and, and their words, and it just caught your attention, and you wanted what they had? And there are people that are looking and searching and want what you have, what I have. But if we don't express it, if we're not his expression in the world, then people are missing it. So the question that that I want to close with. And, and let me just, uh, this statement as far as, again, being his expression. Christ is manifested to the world uh, through the body of Christ. Again, that we're his expression. The question that I want us to ask ourselves, how am I expressing Jesus in my world? How am I expressing him? Because we've got to make that personal. Am I a poor expression, a poor avatar of Christ? Because Christians, we have a responsibility. We've got a job to do. We have an incredible call on our lives. We need to do this thing together, not on our own, not by ourselves, not, hey, it's just me and Jesus over here. No, he placed us in a body. And the world is truly going to see God by the body working together. See, just like individually you're going to express Christ, well, there's going to be other Christians that are going to come along and express Christ in people's lives. And they're going to see it, not just in your life, but in other people's lives. And they're going to turn their lives over to Christ simply because, again, they see it. And so, God, I just thank you for what you've shared with us today and what you've given us, what you've placed in our hearts, God, and in our lives and what you've spoken. And, God, I just pray that we would just, because um, I know, God, in, in some ways some of this is a little heavy. And, God, I just pray that we would chew on it. And we would just, we, we wouldn't rush the process and that we wouldn't just, just say, oh, well, that's cool and, and just move forward. But God, I, I, I pray especially those of us that are Christ followers, those of us that, that want to walk as Christians in this earth and truly want to express you, I pray, God, that we would truly chew on what we've heard today. We would tr truly chew on, mull over, and really think about what we've heard today, what you've, what you've shared with us today. God, we thank you again for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you made a way where there was no way. And God, we just thank you that just this incredible idea of the body of Christ that we represent you, Jesus, 
that we are your hands and feet in this world, that you're, you're relying upon us. And God, we want to take that call upon our lives and, and that responsibility as the body of Christ. We want to take that serious, God. And so help us, Lord, express you well. Help us express you wisely and be, be your ambassadors and, and, tr and truly your representatives in this earth. God, we thank you and we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Man, he is good.